I love how players, especially on like EDO Pro specifically, since that's the simulator I choose to play on, love to talk so much garbage and can't ever back it up. And then they say that they're going to beat me. They say that they're better than me. And then they don't know how Kashtira Shangri-La works. Dear God, this is the community we are in, ladies and gentlemen. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo brown stain off of that subscribe button so we can keep on climbing even higher the 1100 ladder, and I really do appreciate all the support. Be sure that you're hitting that Taco Bell notification bell. Last couple videos I posted from the YCS were getting some dislikes, and I don't know why. I don't know if like someone's putting a troll on my channel or a bot or something, because I didn't do anything wrong, man. Leave, leave me alone. I just want to make videos. <laughs> So, <laughs> we we got to talk about this trash that just happened to be like literally 30 minutes ago. So, for those of you who don't know, maybe you don't watch all my videos, whatever. I'm trying to play test for an upcoming regional, which if you're going to be at the Kissimmee Regional in Orlando, Florida, I will be there. Be sure to come up and say hi. Would love to take a selfie or, you know, follow you on Twitter or MySpace because MySpace is all yours. That's what I say to ladies. <laughs> you know, whatever it is that you want to do, I'll, you know, come on up, say hi, I'll trade, whatever. Um, but anyway, so I've been testing Cash Tira. I've been playing a bunch of different versions of Cash Tira. And on EDO Pro, I don't really want to be wasting my time with a table 500 fucking deck. Like, I don't know, no no offense to my subscriber, uh, Agaron the Creator. I hope I said your name right, pimp. Shout out to you, uh, aka Zane Truesdale. But like, I don't want to be playtesting against our Romages. Again, no offense, Zane. It's just that deck's not meta. So I will make a dual note on EDO Pro. And for those of you who don't play on EDO Pro, this is something that you can do. You can make a dual note whenever you're getting ready to like host a room on the server. And you can put like, you know, testing meta only or casual decks only, you know, no exceeds, no pendulums, you know, whatever. So mine is always, uh, I'm always in the competitive server, specifically the EU central competitive server, because that's just the default server. Majority of people are in there and I'm putting testing for a regional meta only. Now, when your little cute self logs on into the server bloop, and you hit refresh on down to the bottom, you're going to see all the rooms that are open. You're going to see my username and then you're going to see the dual note right the fuck next to it. So you can't miss it. Like unless you just don't read or you're blind, like you're going to see it there in front of your face. And I'm still having people like constantly having people joining in the room playing this table 500 garbage and i'm just like bro i don't and like here's the thing let, let me let me make something specific if you're like a subscriber or like if i'm doing a live stream and i'm on edo pro because i'm not going to be on dueling book or dueling nexus because those are liquid ass uh or master shits by extension because we know how bad that is um, I don't mind playing against subscribers. I don't mind, you know, just playing casually. Like, you know, if I'm in a live stream or something, like I'm probably going to play like Gate Guardian, like just for fun. Cause like it, it's a fun casual deck. But when I'm like nose to the grind, testing for a regional, making sure I know my lines, seeing all the lines of play available to me, I don't want to be wasting my time against your Infinitrack Machina deck that is like going to go to table 302 at the best. And then you're going to be sitting there going X5 going, I don't know what happened to my deck. Have you seen the current format, my man? Have you seen the current format? <laughs> like, I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. So even with these damn notes, I'm still getting kids coming on up into my room and bitching about me playing Cash Tira or like what this kid just did that we were about to talk about, bitching at me as if I don't know how to play Cash Tira, even though we went second place at an OTS and then we failed in the top eight to a Cash Tira mirror. I don't want to get into it. Um, like we can top locals on a d consistent basis if my dumb ass doesn't misplay like I did this past Saturday. And like, I know what I'm doing. I've put like, honestly, probably like $500 into this deck. Uh, so I didn't put nowhere near a grand into it, but I don't care if I'm putting $5 or $500 into a deck. I'm going to test the shit out of it. So I know what it is that I'm doing and I'm not an idiot with the deck and going like five and four, like I did in Necroz tier zero format back in the day and lost like $200 on the deck after I sold it to the vendors. Like I'm going to test my stuff.
So we're playing against this kid. He's playing like Infinitrack, Machine of Fortress, whatever the fuck deck. And I start popping off with Cash Chair. We opened up Birth and Theosis. And typically if you open up both, like if you also have access to the Unicorn, you can just go Unicorn and grab like either a second Theosis or Birth. I like to go for a second Birth in case they break my board because of my luck, they're always going to have the fucking outs to break my board. So we just go for the second Birth to follow up. Boom, boom, boom. We're doing our stuff. And I hadn't played Theosis yet. And he goes, bro, do you even know how to play Cash Chair? I'm like, bitch, I'm still comboing. Relax your anus. And then of course we play the Theosis and he's like, oh, okay, yeah, you know what you're doing. Now, keep that in mind. He goes, yeah, you know what you're doing. As if, like, he knows what he's doing. Because clearly he does not. He doesn't even know how Shangri-Era works. <laughs> so we pop off. We lock out three of his zones. He starts trying to play. We're doing our stuff, whatever. We're banishing his stuff, locking out zones. I go to lock out uh, the what would be the fourth and the fifth zone in his monster zone. He chains Super Poly, ditches a Machine of Fortress. I'm like, fine, whatever. He fuses with, like my Arise Heart, and I think my Diabolsis, he makes Mud Dragon, the, the Mud Dragon of the Swamp Fusion. Well, he summoned it into a zone that I locked with Shangri-Era. So, like, after the play resolves, my dumbass accidentally misclicked on Pressure Plant trying to pop his Mud Dragon. I forget, I forget it can't be targeted. So I just pop my Birth instead. He goes, bro, why, why is there an X over my zone? Why the fuck are my zones locked out? This is a bug. And I'm like, Bro, you're trying to bitch at me. You're trying to complain to your boy with over 1,100 subscribers about, are you even playing Cash Tier right? What you doing? What you doing, big boy? You want to bitch and complain to me, and you don't know why your zone is locked out. I'm like, so I, I had to write an essay in, in a little chat box and explain to him, it's not a bug, you shit talker. You, you knob, you tool. <laughs> uh... For those of you who don't know, now, my lovely subscribers are lovely viewer, because if you're watching this channel, you're a very lovely person, obviously. And so I explained to him that whenever the effect of Shanger Era activates, if you change something that would summon a monster to a particular zone, then when the chain resolves, that zone is still going to be locked. However, when we were resolving the chains, you summon a monster to that zone. So when your monster leaves the field, that zone is permanently locked. But until then, you can use that zone. But the X over it means that it's locked once that monster leaves the field. And I guess like his brain just exploded because he's like, yeah, I would play two more games with you because uh, I know that I would beat you, but uh, my internet's about to run out, so I got to go. Bye. And I'm like, bro, you weren't going to beat me. And on top of that, he said two more games as if we were going to go to game three. No, absolutely not. I had your ass beat game one. Then we were going to side deck in our evenly. We we're going to probably side deck in Feather Duster too because Infinite Tracks and all that rogue shit. I don't want to deal with your back row. And I was probably going to do D Shifter anyway just to piss you off because most rogue decks get pissed off with D Shifter. We were going to side deck all that in. I was going to take out my Iblies and my Lances and shit, leaving my three Econs because Econ is busted AF this format. And so is Lava Golem. You need to be playing three copies of that shit because it is broken. And then I was going to whoop your ass whether I opened up. Up evenly or I open up lava golems like it what you doing son <laughs> but this kid and I know it's a kid because of how he was acting and like typing in the chat box and shit this kid had the balls he had the steel cojones of Patrick Hoban ladies and gentlemen to tell me I don't know what I'm doing playing cash Tira. and then he don't even know how shangri Era works like bro I, I could I could feel the salt through my computer. And it reminded me of the salt <laughs> that I saw at Locals this past Saturday. So here's what happened, right? Like I said, you gotta be playing through Lava Golem. We go against Tier Element. Game one, he makes his board. Mike, cool. Draw for turn. In our five card opening hand, we open up Lava Golem. You know what we did? We dropped down that Lava Golem. We just started dancing like our nuts were hanging. Like, Lava Golem's disgusting. So he's salty. And I felt bad for the guy because like he was cool. I had done some trades with him in the past and stuff. Um, I'm not going to shout him out on this video in case he happens to see it, but if you know who you are, so hi, if you happen to see this. And like, like I said, I felt bad because like, he was a cool dude and he got Lava Golem. And like, honestly, I only won the game because of Lava Golem because <laughs> I was able to break that board. And then we go into game two. I decided to go second because I know Tyrion only want to go first. He ain't going to make my ass go first. Uh, so he does his thing, boom, boom, boom. He ends on like a Dark World, Rue Kalos, Kaleido Heart, and like a Fenrir and says, go. And he has nothing in his grave I've got to worry about. You know what we top deck? Lava Golem. You know what I opened my five card hand? Lava Golem. So I went, Lava your Rue Kalos in your Dark World. He tried to use the effect of Rue Kalos to bring him back. And we're like, no, it's a summoning condition. It's not by card effect. And I'm like, uh, well, in that case, I'll go ahead and Lava Golem your other two cards. And I'm sitting with like a double, two Theosis, a, uh, Cashtira Unicorn, I think I like a birth, and I go, 
Especially on the unicorn. He goes, yeah, you got it. And he just throws the lava golems back on my board. I'm like, he rage quit. He rage quit. I do that all the time whenever people rage quit on EDO Pro. As soon as I see Lost Connection, I'm like, he rage quit. He rage quit. He rage quit to the lava golem. Bruh. And like, it's shit like that that just makes me laugh. Or like with this kid, not reading Shangri-Era or not knowing how the card fucking functions. And I'm just like... Why do people not read cards? And like, I get if like people are coming on here and like they want to play casually. I totally get that. It's just when I'm trying to test for a regional and you just blatantly don't read the fucking dual note that's on your screen and you just like walk on in with infinite track. Like I'm not going to go easy on you just because you're playing a table 503 deck. I'm still going to be practicing my combos, practicing my lines because with my luck, you're probably going to have the Nibiru or the Spear Mode or the Kaiju, whatever the fuck. And I'm not going to open up the Ibli that I'm playing three copies of. So like I got to make sure I know my lines and know how to recover after getting Nibiru because of my ass luck, I'm going to get Nibiru. Guys... Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm tired of this baby back bullshit. If you are going to play me, you better be ready to either get your cheeks clapped or clap my cheeks. And the only one that should be clapping my cheeks is the Ultra Ball. I could see it with a straight face. <laughs> it's on the floor. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.